और हम वेलकम टू वन मोर शो सो व्हाट डू यू थिंक इज कॉमन बिटवीन ए लामा एंड अ शार्क सो बोथ ऑफ देम हैव एंटीबॉडीज दैट आर टाइनी एंटीबॉडीज दैट आर नैनो एंटीबॉडीज एंड दीज एंटीबॉडीज आर द वन दैट आर सुपर प्रोटेक्टिव अगेंस्ट कोविड एंड दैट इज वॉट आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन टू यू राइट नाउ सो शार्क एंड लामा सो डोंट ट्राई टू कैच अ शार्क लेट स्टार्ट अ डिस्कशन so this is dr bean.com for once only for a few days i think we've been doing it for a few weeks now uh, there is a link in the description if you wanted to have more such videos there are 900 videos on dr bean.com site and the there is a one time fee link in the description which is really really inexpensive okay so with that here is the news these are the little cutie pie llamas and we'll see how they are helping one of their cousin lama whose name is wali that wali is the lama that participated in a study in mount sinai hospital and that is what we're going to talk about this is the study on the mount sinai hospital site this is the study in the cell uh, site this is a reference to what is the difference in antibodies of sharks and and camelids that is llama or camel uh, compared to traditional or standard antibodies and i'll explain that in a second and then there are some more references on the similar line so let's start a discussion very quick discussion with a couple of diagrams here can you see a llama he is hiding so please remember we are not going to need llama's blood we only need the antibodies once we get the antibodies we can then have bacteria produce those antibodies a uh, mass or on scale so we just needed the antibodies and those antibodies are already taken so no further llamas will be hurt and even this llama wali he was only hurt that he, he was given sars cov 2 and then his blood was sampled for the antibodies i think that llama is okay okay so what is the basic uh, discussion the discussion is this when we um are exposed to an antigen we know that we make antibodies these antibodies we have seen this uh, uh mechanism many times that the exposure occurs innate arm cells pick up that antigen they present that to acquired arm cells in the acquired arm there is a humoral aspect and there is a cytotoxic as aspect humoral aspect is where the b cells become activated and they make antibodies so here on the right this is an antibody that we make and the structure of the antibody with slight variation generally is this that in this antibody there are two types of chains these are proteins there are two types of chains that are involved so let's look at this one part here let me change the color to black so this part so here this blue one is the heavy chain and this red one is the light chain heavy chain in turn is further divided into an area where it combines with the light chain and makes a binding region this area here is a binding region it binds with some antigen binding region this is also called variable region because it is variable for each antibody that is produced by a b cell so one b cell will produce only one kind of antibodies and what does that mean it would produce only one kind of binding region or variable region a b cell for imagine me for a second a b cell and let's say if you look at my hand and that this is the this is the structure which is the binding region so i can make ig d or ige or igm or igg or iga so that is a difference that can be produced but all of them will have the binding shape which is this way so the variable region for one cell that produces antibodies is going to be the same but multiple b cells if you line them all up 
and ask them to produce antibodies. Then they will all produce antibodies with varying binding region. So if I give you an example, imagine there are many uh, women who are going to bear a child. All the children are going to look different from each other. However, imagine that every time a woman has a child, a mother has a child, every child is the same as previous. So it's not twins from one birth, but every successive birth produces a child which is exactly the same as before. That is what happens. So one B cell can only produce antibodies with the same binding region, but multiple B cells can produce antibodies with multiple kind of binding regions. Okay, so this binding region is important for today's talk with the llamas. Why? Because this binding region decides how a an antibody will bind to an antigen. So for example, if I make a spike protein here, let's say there is this spike protein, and on this spike protein receptor binding domain, there are many epitopes. Epitopes mean patterns with which the binding region can bind. And the binding region can normally bind from seven proteins, uh, amino acids, to 11, even up to 21, 22, based, depending upon if it is a B cell and T cell and so on. So that is the binding region's capability. Plus, to bind, this whole antibody has to be able to access the antigen where it needs to bind. What does that mean? Imagine for a second that my hand is it's a gross example but i think you would you would catch the the idea behind it imagine with my hand i can pick up my food but if i have eaten the food and it's in my stomach now even if i possess a hand that can capture or catch that food i cannot now have my hand go in my stomach to catch it or to grab it Similarly, the proteins are three-dimensional structures. So there can be deeper in the protein, there can be epitopes that are interesting to bind with. But this big anti antibody cannot insert itself deep in the antigen to go and bind. It can only bind on the surface areas that are exposed. Why? Because this antibody is a big blob of protein, normally one, I think 160 kilo delton. What does that mean? A delton is the weight of one hydrogen atom. So 160 kilo delton would mean 160,000 deltons or the weight or the size of that much of the weight. So that's, that's a large protein, for example. Now, the llama and the shark and alpacas and camels. So basically camelids, so shark is not a camelid, but shark has a similar antibodies. Camelids, that is llamas and, and alpacas and camels. You can see I'm repeating because I'm really loving naming these animals. And then there are some other animals as well, which I never knew that they exist. For example, there are animals... For example, they are, these are vicunas or there is this guanaco. So there are seven camelids, which include various species of camels. So this camel, this camel, this camel, the cute little llama we're talking about, alpacas, and I'm, I'm enjoying the, <laughs> the animals. I, I just love them. So anyways, so there are multiple kinds of llamas and, and uh, sorry, camelids. All camelids have this characteristic and shark also had this characteristic. And what is that? They produce antibodies that are really tiny. Imagine if they have really tiny little hands. So if my hand is an antibody's variable region, imagine now there is like 100 times or, or 200 times smaller hand. That is what these tiny antibodies are. These are called nanobodies or NBS nanobodies. 
instead of antibodies, ABs, they're called nanobodies. And nanobodies, their quality is that there is no light chain. So this variable region is made up of a heavy chain piece and a light chain piece. Together, they make a variable region. Here in a nano, nanobody, there is no light chain. So that is one part. So only the heavy chain part makes a tiny binding region. So of course, it doesn't make a binding region of 7 or 10 or 12. It can even make a binding region of only 2 or 3 or 4 amino acids. So it can actually bind to a more specific, smaller area. Then the overall, the antibody itself is also small. So the remaining tail of the larger part of the antibody, which is called fraction constant or FC part, even the FC part is smaller. The whole thing is how small? This whole thing is about 15, 15 kilo deltons. The whole thing, this whole antibody. This variable region alone in traditional antibodies is usually 25 kilo deltons and bigger. So here, this whole antibody is just 15 kilo. It is so small. So just like this little cutie pie llama, this is small. And what is the benefit of that thing being small? It can actually really insert in the protein and kind of bind it various parts and make the functionality of the protein disrupted. And then it can insert at so many other, it can attach to so many other sites. Why is that? So imagine this, if you, let me share my myself for a second. Imagine that this hand this shape here is a binding region. And let's say an antibody wants to bind here. So this is the variable region. The variable region has to kind of fit with the binding region. Now imagine that the binding region is present. The, this pattern or epitope is present, but part of the epitope is hidden inside. Now the variable region is present here. It wants to bind here, but it can bind to some part and the remaining part is not fitting because that part is hidden in the protein. So then this binding cannot occur. On the other hand, the llamas and sharks or camelids and sharks antibodies are so tiny that they can just bind to this part. So imagine tiny little needles that go and get stuck to the spike proteins. So the benefit of that is that you can attack spike protein at so many areas and you can, the, these uh, antibodies can even insert themselves inside the spike protein and go and uh, uh, disrupt it. This is the benefit. So nanobodies are useful. Now the question is, what, what did the researchers prove? It, did they make a vaccine? No, this is an antiviral they made, just like this Paxlovid that is all over the place nowadays. The Just like Paxlovid, antivirus. What this does is, not only it is tiny and it can attack at many parts of the spike protein, and not only it can attack on the many parts of the spike protein, I'm so sad that I had to take the llama's picture away, but it can actually, because it attacks smaller parts of the spike protein, it can actually attack almost all coronavirus spike protein types, including Omicrons and the previous variants. Because these are just tiny ones, they can just attach to a lot of places. So they could attach to 70% of the spike protein. Because of that, these antivirals are able to cover all variants. Secondly, these can be aerosolized. So they were able to create a spray, nasal and oral spray of the antiviral that you just spray it. And then those antibodies go in the mouth and then over there they start attacking the virus and maybe go in the circulation and attack them as well. Isn't that interesting? It's an actually an antivirus which is so tiny. Now, what was the study itself? What did they do? So let me show you what they did. So what they did was here, they said that we took a llama. They had llamas. The llama's name was Wally, Wally, and they infected him with SARS-CoV-2. Once they infected him with SARS-CoV-2, then they took his blood 
and they saw what kind of so first they made sure that it has developed protection so they kept infecting until he had the covid and then he had developed immunity once he had developed immunity they took the blood samples to see what kind of antibodies are sitting in there and they found these nanobodies so here we observe super immunity because these nanobodies were able to cover almost all beta coronaviruses so that means even future virus can be covered by this whatever variant is going to arrive our way so here we observe super immunity in a camelid extensively immunized with sars-cov-2 receptor binding domain so they didn't put the whole sars-cov-2 in him they just gave him rbd so that there are hundreds of antibodies against the rbd tiny parts of rbd we rapidly isolated isolate a large repertoire of specific ultra high affinity nanobodies ultra high affinity because they were just binding to a smaller part and they were themselves very teeny they could just insert it everywhere that bind strongly to all known sarbicovirus clades using integrative proteomics so all known clades these pan sarbicovirus nanobodies so they call them psnbs so nbs stands for nanobodies and ps is pan sarbicovirus so all sarbicoviruses these pan sarbicovirus nanobodies are highly effective against sars-cov-2 sars-cov and sars-cov-2 variants including omicron with the best median neutralization potency at single digit nano uh, nanograms per milliliter tiny amount is needed and it just covers them a highly potent and check this out inhalable inhalable a highly potent inhalable that means it can be given through the respiratory pathway and bispecific ps and b is also developed so then they are they developed that ps and b and that is the antiviral structural determinant determinations of 13 PSNBs with the SARS-CoV-2 spike or RBD reveal five epitope classes providing insights into the mechanism and evolution of the blood activities. The highly evolved PSNBs target small, flat and flexible epitopes that contain over 75% of conserved RBD. So the RBDs cannot go anywhere. The viruses cannot go anywhere if they are attacked with this, these nanobodies. So Lama was not hurt. He just donated his antibodies. And those antibodies, now they say in their other um, discussions that these can be then, so here, these highly versatile antiviral agents can be rapidly produced virtually anywhere from microbes such as E. coli or yeast cells, he adds. In the past, so the doctor is Dr. Shi. He is the lead uh, researcher. In the past, nanobody therapies have been clinically proven as safe and effective against human diseases such as blood clotting disorders and cancers. So that is the talk. I loved it because this is Lama's talk and Alpaca's talk and Camel's. So <laughs> with this, I hope it makes sense. Thank you very much for... Uh, for listening please like subscribe and share and there is a link actually there are many links in the description one of the links says that i have a special offer for you that is a youtube link some folks commented and said we cannot find that link so there it says if you like this then i have a special program for you and there is a link with that says you yt special that is a link for drbean.com there are 900 more videos they all with one fee never recurring fee you get access to all of them in addition to that, if you would like to support this work, you can buy me a coffee or you can use PayPal or you can become YouTube member, Substack member and so on. There are many choices. So with this, thank you very much. I would see you in a few minutes on the cafe side for drawing discussions. And please like, subscribe and share. Bye bye.